Hey guys, today I'm playing the Stanley Repair Ultra Deluxe because why not? Wait. Wait. Wait, look at the computer and the thing. It's, it's going endlessly. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I also, my sister's here, so yeah. The end is never. The end is never. The this end is, is the never. story of a man named Stanley. Oh, Percy, by the way, I found Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Okay, I don't need all these details. 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push. That guy does how not know how to type clearly. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And no, others like no weekends or something. Stanley not, not even Christmas. Yeah, I Very wouldn't want to be him, no matter like I wouldn't want to have that job, Stanley like for Stanley. any amount of time, no matter how good the pay is. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give Wait, him instructions. Wait, not a single order? A meeting, or even say, hi. Uh. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete How long has this guy worked here? Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Can I bring that coffee with me? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, this guy's already a little annoying, so... <laughs> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, no. he entered the door on his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Okay, I do Stanley have simply stood right here, now. drinking It'll be fine as long as they keep moving. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Fine. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Bruh. Why can't I go? Why, why don't you want me to Yet go Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's Fine. office. Fine. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked? Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held Wait, from I him? Can, I can crowd. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, hmm. Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. I'm just gonna guess a, a, a totally random thing. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Well, I am he really good at pressing random buttons. Passageway. So, yeah, it wasn't that difficult. Okay, no path there.
Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large mind door control of the red facility. mind control facility. Uh, light bulb? Will that give me an idea on how to escape the, the mind control facility or something? Packed with television screens. Oh no, what it just turns on the lights. Secret did this Probably should have thought that. Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Uh, no, I have like no physical strength at all, so yeah. Mental strength. Bro, I was making a joke. I know. Wait, I, I, can I die of fall damage? Well? Aha! Uh -huh. You've made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. Welcome! You see, back when the Stanley Parable first launched in 2013, Getting to the bottom of the mind control facility was a bug that we simply didn't catch during development. And you all sent us lots of photos of it on Twitter and acted very superior about it. And you're uh -huh. all very, very clever. Good for you. Anyway, when it came time to update the game, we knew that we had to do something about this little goof of ours. So here you go. New content. You can call it the... Bottom of the mind control room ending. If that Wait, enhances ending? your perception or, of the value of the game. Is there like updates, a ton of endings about this game? Crave? New content? Huh. Always more content, more content, more, 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 more. And I'm here to give it to you. I'm here to make it seem like we really covered every nook and cranny of the game with secrets and Easter eggs. How about this? We wrote a new piece of music just for this section. You won't hear it anywhere else in the game. It's a secret. That's just for you. That's how special you are. We call this track, Good Job You've Made It to the Bottom of the Mind Control Facility. Well done. Really great. Good job. You did it. Good job. Three, two, one. Good job. You made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. You jumped on the catwalk. You should have been careful. You should have been careful. It used to be a bug, but oh. now it's an ending. Now it's an ending. I believe in you. I believe in your ability to cross this barrier and chase your dreams. But railings don't mean anything Good job, you did it 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 Good job, you okay, did it Good job, you 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 did it Huh Wait, I have to start back here? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, that's why I'm ignoring you so much. I'm just gonna do nothing he says. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Oh, Thank goodness time. Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now but eager to get back to business. Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Hey. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. 
I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Bro, you're not someone my therapist. Stop talking to me like that. Someone you've forgotten stop about. Stop being annoying. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Huh? Yeah, you're confusing me too much. I wonder if I can... But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, <laughs> there was Stanley left from the platform and okay, I'm gonna get off earlier Good next job, time. Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> I, I forgot there was no drum button. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm speed up. work is gone. What could it mean? Mm -hmm. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Wait, I wonder what time it is. The clock is actually moving. It's like eleven twenty. Wait, like, uh, almost eleven twenty-one. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait here until eleven twenty-one. Uh, well, then eleven twenty-two. Okay. When Stanley came to a Wait. set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew perfectly trophy. well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get Wait, back this to sounds business, like people. Stanley Is took this like on her imagination or something? Left. Stanley was so bad at Wait, my theory is that this is all in my head. It's incredible he wasn't pressed, fired years ago. Like, when I press X. Theories, it's way too early. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy. Bro, really, I... I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else theories. can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove this that I'm should be on all schools ever. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. No. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. <laughs> you want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Do you see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Yeah. I do not think I put a lot of time into that, because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing, because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work I think with I, me. You give me absolutely trees. nothing so far. Tell you what, let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game Extra benefited options. from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Aha! You see, I knew I was onto something. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? How did I know the game needed a third door? Well, 
It's we instinct are. mostly, a calling in your gut. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. You can't teach that. Why do you say it like that? Don't even try. Here, like based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly Aww. candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. A leaderboard? Skid. Last place? Wow. I guess I'm just the worst now, player ever. Would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. No, it insulted me. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right. And if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. Four so hours? Why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective. Be sure to keep notes on your experience. <coughs> you heartless I want to see what happens. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, I've well, people I under the age do, of 18. Out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Aha! Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Our stranger. Mm. Well, it seems obvious to well, me that you are to play as a creepy man a spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower. Perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love nah, everything I just about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Wait, that was the Minecraft door sound. Okay, you can't... I don't think you can fall off the rounds in this game. Oh no. No, 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 it can't be. Uh -huh. It is. <laughs> it's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. Huh? Oh. Thank God. Why? Stanley, what a close call. You nearly wandered off into that. that thing. That big open. Just wandering around. No right or wrong directions. No path uh. to follow. You can just go in any. Ooh. Oh, thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with so walls. Was that bird sounded something with like nice, boring. big, insurmountable walls. Hmm. 
<laughs> okay, I think this will be just the thing. Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage this to get lost in this game, leap, I will be phenomenally impressed. Your car exploded or something. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Touchdown? Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Actually, I don't know what sports do, so for all I know, that could be a part of sports ball, if that's even a thing. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Is it better than my miserable little story that I work so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought, and I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one to. ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. I'm going to try it out. Here comes another ball. Yeah. Hold on. What are you oh. doing? Oh. Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you? I, write a story I thought he would stop me. <laughs> Why am I so good at falling down places? Like this is the third time I've fallen down somewhere. I didn't see that there was no floor. Oh. Uh. Deeper, I guess. Yeah, I guess I'm just really good at falling. I assume I have to go even lower, so I'm gonna look for a hole. Wait, is that a light? I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. The end? I can wait. Percy, you got too much lore. This is the first time you're playing with. I've never uh, played this, but like. I've, I've, I've just been really good at falling. You're too good at collecting lore. I'm Always too good at falling. What could it mean? Stan Fine, I'll do what you want, meeting. I guess. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set I've of never two actually open taken doors, this path. he entered the door on his left. Yeah, I know. I've been watching me play it for like the past second hour. Yet there was not a single person here either. Oh, only 24 minutes. Feeling a wave of disbelief, okay. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming so to what if I go down? Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Fine, I'll do that next time. I wonder if I can fall out the fall out the window. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. 
What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, okay, I'll Stan is incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Why does this kind of look like Lethal Company? Yeah, unfortunately, it's been broken for over a year. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Yeah, we have one. Mm. Sure. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I'm gonna try not to fall this time. How did you even fall? Oh, I'll show you. No. So, like, I just climbed up here and then just walked off. Now the monitors jumped to life, oh. their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. But fired? Someone is fired. Uh, I forgot I'll do it next time. This mind control facility, it was too no horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly British. spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? <laughs> but here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Now I want to see where this goes. I know. I'm bored. I'm sitting here doing Next. Okay. Okay, I guess I have to find three now. Just leave right here, right now. Just walk no. out the door. No. Exit. Stop trying to exit. Bro, stop. That's five over here, I guess. A 
And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, but, to put yeah, an end to this horrible on. place and to... Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command! Freedom we was took mere one by and away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through yeah. the open door. Feel like it could have worked. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation. Yeah. The that rock is like so untextured. The All the rocks are like untextured. This Look. Was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Did you beat the. <laughs> Wait, did I actually. Wait. Let me see. Oh. Really? Really? How do you? I just followed instructions and pressed a single button. I don't see how that's a gold trophy. I, Stanley I, knew the office layout like the back of his hand. It was only a matter of time before he found the others, whatever they were. Just a matter of time. Yeah, I had a feeling it was like for something. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. The moment he entered his manager's office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Could he really be all alone? This was too much for Stanley to take. Too much for any man. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music no way! Look what you've done first. I didn't think it would do that. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley oh. calmly walked forward into the opened passageway.
perfectly textured. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying earlier about lethal company. Lethal company isn't like weirdly textured like that. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large yeah, door that read Mind I don't Control know, it still Facility. Looks like Four twenty seven. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Uh, as I'm gonna watch every for it. at the same time. Like every unique Dude. one. This was a whole group. We could Now the monitors jumped to life. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's oh, it's right there. The right lives there. of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, this one of them, eternally mounted in this place it. where freedom meant nothing. Then I'm going to go down. This mind control facility. It was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was Never. unthinkable. Never. No. Wasn't it? Okay, I, it even I can't do British accent. Had he truly spent his entire life really utterly hard. blind to the world? Never. Never. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exist. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Yeah. Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. No. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Hmm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. Yeah. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, yeah, right. pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, yeah. I let the office you know, sink into the ground, again. I... swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Once yeah. you try to make sense of everything no. and take back the control rested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go which way but oh up sure there it's, it's up there it's up there the next go around will be even better my goodness left. only 34 oh. seconds left but i'm enjoying this so much you know what to hell with it i'm going to put some extra time on the clock why not <laughs> 
These are precious additional seconds, Stan. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Thank you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little it's thing in this right. room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored no, buttons, fine. or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save it's not working. me. Why would you say that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made oh, no. humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Um, Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. Oh, all it's password! Time. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever up. I think we figured it out a little too late. Did we even figure it out? Yeah, I think I have to enter a password because I saw something that said, like, three times remaining. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he Aww. might find an answer there. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. What happens if I stay here? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It's not empty. Yeah, you There's a broom here. Yeah, I just want to... Actually, I want to eat the broom. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm... I'm genuinely confused. What's the problem? Look at that. Look at that. Look closely at it. Look closely at it. You do realize there's no choice oh. or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Yeah. Jokes on you, Stanley Alan. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really <laughs> stupid. He probably only got Aww. the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley Bro. is addicted to drugs and hookers. Stop insulting me. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. 
You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed in front of your screen. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone and nearby also, so I'm as to easy. ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. I don't care, I'm gonna keep going. Well, you wanna go downstairs and get a snack? Uh, sh uh, sure, yeah, we'll be right back. I'll probably edit this out, so... No, let, no, I just not. Uh, yeah, you can just skip forward. I don't really care. So, yeah, just skip forward until we start... Until, you know, stuff happens again. Okay, be right back. Okay, you're still here, cause yeah, I I just got back. Come on, I'm still here. <laughs> kind of expected an ending, even though he did, even though he literally said there wouldn't be an ending. Fine. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, 
Huh? What does that say? But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found Wait. an answer, an explanation. 51 minutes? His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice... Wait, why the is there a car here? Stanley. After How did I never question him until now? that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. No, it's... Oh, okay. It did, I guess. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Huh? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. What? She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. 
But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man Did who had started through cat? town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the oh. sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, yes, I did. for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. Wait, I only he have was five minutes left crazy. This morning. I didn't this know there was a woman knew. for this. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am saying, I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man Wait, that's made her better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this. So it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. So, is any of this even real? Huh? Yeah, I guess I'm gonna be done for today because that was really like a good place to stop. I was certainly planning running out of time to record, so yeah. Either way, guys, bye.